Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the micro bullish scenario where we're looking at a three wave corrective structure to the downside in a WXY, where the most common target for wave Y is between the 1 and the 1.236 pulled from the high to the low of W with a flat in wave X and I put it on the top of this wave X over here. You can see that it is nicely respected and we have a less common target being the 1.618 still down here in confluence with the blue target box that we have over here sitting between 36.3k and 36.5k with the most important area of support being this daily naked point of control. Now it's also important to know that price just missed out on hitting the golden pocket that you take from the low to the high of this move. Drag your FIPS to the right side if you hold shift and then what you see over here is price just missing out on hitting that 618 over there which is quite interesting and does increase probabilities a little bit to maybe come back down later at some stage as well. But of course, if this is the low of a wave Y, we have to observe the move that we get towards the upside. And that is why I have a couple of local folders as well. Now, just above price, we do have some resistance, which is important for this scenario, because if price can get through the golden pocket taken from the high of X to the low over here, in confluence with the value area high of this volume profile, probabilities will increase to move to the upside and move to the blue box over here, which then would uh, invalidate this scenario, basically saying, hey, we don't really have to wait for another wave Y to the downside. Then the preferred scenario becomes that wave Y is in and we might be looking for continuation to the upside in an either a bigger A, B, and then a C to the downside in a flat, or of course, bullish continuation in an impulse. Now the resistance above price over here is just above this high as well, with the golden pocket starting at 37.3K, value area high at 37.34K as well. It's just a 3 to 4K area in the 37K region. Now if we go towards the local bullish scenario, where we are looking for a continuation to the upside if wave Y is already finished after then a three wave structure. We have to think about a double one two over here. We have a wave one to the upside, wave two down, another wave one, another two, and then continuation to the upside in a wave three. You can see I pulled two trend lines and what I would prefer to see or what is most common, I suppose, in Elliott waves is that the double one two forms a little bit of a diagonal structure and eventually you get the push to the upside where the second wave one is usually shorter in price and time compared to the first wave one as well as the second wave two being shorter in price and time compared to the first wave two which also makes sense if you talk about Elliott wave degrees because the blue count is the higher degree Elliott wave count and the white count is a lower degree Elliott wave count as in white you have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that finishes the blue 3 then you're looking for blue 4 and then eventually blue 5 so it would usually make more sense for 1 and 2 to be bigger in price and time than the lower degree wave 1 and 2 however this wave 1 is longer in price and time and this wave 2 is bigger in price as well like it's a deeper retracement compared to what we had over here lowering the probabilities at the moment for this bullish scenario now it did happen once before that we got a similar structure as you see over here in the past and it just hit me which is this structure that I'm going to show you right now it actually was down here I mean I am on the four hour time frame so I do realize it's not ideal but on the lower time frame here, we had a move to the upside, we had a move down, second move up that was bigger, second move down that was bigger before eventually we got a big push. Now this area over here that you can check on your chart was from the 10th of March till basically the 12th of March. So you can find that area on your chart and compare it a little bit with what we have here at the moment. And that would then be the bullish scenario where you want to see continuation to the upside. Now in the bearish scenario on the micro, we are looking for an impulse to the downside. Of course, this is currently the lower probability scenario, as mentioned the past days, where we're looking for a big one or a small one, actually, and a big wave two sideways as well. Reaching the 0 0.382 Fibonacci taken from the high to the low, that is a more common target for a wave B or a wave X, less common for a wave 2, so that increases probabilities for a corrective structure to the downside, lowest probabilities for a 1, 2 and a bigger wave 3. And also if we're looking for a big wave three to the downside, we want to see impulsivity, right? 
moving uh, price moving impulsively like this like parabolic to the downside and volume increasing and you don't actually want to see these long ranges all the time where you're falling like stairs right continuously move down sideways down sideways that is not really wave three behavior that is more corrective behavior increasing probabilities for still a move towards the upside now the local bearish scenario where price would make a high but then move to the downside would be that the move from the low over here is a corrective structure in an AWXY. So what we're looking for here is a double zigzag. We have a wave A followed by a B followed by a C. That's your W. Three wave corrective structure in a wave X being a zigzag. Common pattern as well in a wave X. And then we're looking for another A, B and then a wave C to the upside where we're looking for this to be a 1, 2, 3, 4 and then a wave 5 where preferably price does not overlap with this high over here just to keep a solid impulse intact, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, wave 4 and 1 not overlapping with one another. If price takes this high then it is no problem to go down like this right that's fine but during this retracement preferably sticking around the 3a2 which is where price bounced at the moment which is a typical wave 4 target as well for potentially then a 1 2 3 4 5 hitting that resistance area that i've shown over here the golden pocket with the value area high observe the reaction do we get continuation interesting then we have a target box up here right the blue one 37.7 to 37.8k where we have a daily if we do reject over here maybe build some bearish cvd and whatnot i'd be looking in this scenario right c is in y is in maybe rejection retracement bear cvd rsi stochastic whatever you look for and then i'd be keeping an eye on this blue box here at the bottom now, if we look at the CVD divergences this morning already, we had bullish CVD divergences over here. We had bullish CVD divergences yesterday. Then we had more bullish CVD divergences with this low and the higher low. And then even more locally between this low and the higher low over here, also bullish CVD divergences. So there's definitely absorption of market shorts going on, pushing price towards the upside, which is exactly what we want to see if we see bullish CVD divergences. If we then look at the probabilities of the different scenarios, then currently on the micro probabilities are higher to take this high. Also with the bullish CVD divergences. And if price can hit the local 886 that you take from the high over here to the low, toggle on the 886, which we just missed out uh, on by a few dollars over here. But if price hits the 886, probabilities will increase to take this high as well. Now, it is quite common for price to hit the 886, retrace back to the golden pocket before continuation. That's, of course, something we'll have to wait and see. It's just a general thing that if the 886 is taken, probabilities increase for this high to be taken as well, which is what I wrote over here. And I will keep my eye on a rejection that we have then around 37.4k with the golden pocket value area high and then potentially observe that move to the downside where then I will be looking for this blue box over here. But that is very reaction dependent, right? In general, on the low time frame like this morning and yesterday, we were talking about probabilities generally are higher to see a move back towards the upside, to see a bounce, right? Basically, on uh, based on this structure that we had to the downside here we currently have a bit of a bounce with bullish CVDs as well so it's looking nice at the moment but I will of course keep my eyes open for potential rejections as well as we got to stay neutral and observe what Bryce does at all moments I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion which is the CVD and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and I'd like to see you at the next one bye bye